Whoa, guys, we've seen Sensible Heat before, and let me give you an actual example. Uh, we're going to have two types of heat, either at constant pressure, which is the one we're going to be analyzing right now, and later we're going to see at constant volume, which is pretty typical for closed systems. And what do I mean with closed? Well, we've seen that before, but just tell me, let's suppose we have a cup and we seal it, and therefore there is no interaction of the air, no interaction of the outside atmosphere, and so on, no heat exchange, etc. You have a water which is closed. And then we will have the, oh, the closed system. But this is not the case right now. We have an open system. What does that mean, open? That we have free matter here. Actually, we have the pressure, which is the ambient pressure. Well, the atmosphere is literally pushing this water. If not, it could probably go and float around. You will have a change in temperature, of course. Latent uh, sensible heat means change in temperature. This CP right here is, let me go back, is the same one here. No P because C may be, a, once again, constant volume, so constant pressure. So you're going to have CV, CP. Uh, specific heat capacity of the substance is either how much kilojoules may that kilogram of substance uh, get for only one Celsius change. Why one Celsius? Because we want to know how much energy is needed for one Celsius change. So let's suppose that this change right here is one Celsius. Let's suppose that this is one kilogram of water. I know probably is a huge bottle. And let's suppose that this is not water even though it says water, let's say it's a substance that may or may not, you don't know the CP, but you know that if you heated that and you added one kilojoule, it changed one Celsius and you know it's one kilogram, well, you could calculate the CP. And once again, I just wanted to make you this note, guys, before we saw that enthalpy is a special property in which during an isobaric process, which is the case right now, the change in this quantity, enthalpy, is going to be equal to that on the heat transfer during the process. So let's talk a little bit more on the specific heat capacity. We've got this, okay. What is exactly that? Well, you know heat is measuring joules, you know mass is measuring kilograms, and you know that the change in temperature is measured in Celsius. Therefore, the CP, or the specific heat capacity of that substance, will be this one here. Mathematically, you can actually just send it right over here. You may either choose heat or change in enthalpy because it's the same, because we are working with constant pressure. And the CP, by definition, is the change on that enthalpy divided by the amount of mass and the amount on increment temperature or change on temperature. The units are either joules or kilojoules per kilogram Celsius. Or you may find even joules per gram per Celsius or calories per gram, Kelvin, whatever you choose, but you have energy, you have mass, and you have temperature. And I always tell my students that they need to see it or hear it as how much heat energy is required for one kilogram of that substance specifically to change one Celsius its temperature, but not only at any case, only at constant pressure. That's my specific heat capacity at constant pressure. Don't forget I add this little P right here to show that this is at uh, a certain constant pressure. Other notes I want to tell you about CP. Uh, probably you know this one here. Zero Celsius is freezing point. 100 Celsius will be boiling point. And you see special changes on the specific heat capacity. We're going to study that later. But what I wanted to show you is that the specific heat capacity is not constant with respect of temperature. If you increase the temperature, let's say we have here 15,000, and if you increase it a little bit more, you will have something around, let's say, 18,000. 
So if you decrease, increase, you're going to change that CP. So let's say we're going to have an exercise on this, but let me show you. Let's say CP at 20 Celsius, 25 Celsius is about 4. And then you increase it to 50 Celsius, and then I don't know, maybe it's now 5. It's going to be a change. <laughs> and this, this is pretty important because if you wanted to calculate heat, well, you're going to suppose then that either you take this CP as constant or you use CP as a differential and then integrate and it's going to be nuts. Once again in engineering we might take this as a constant, I mean this is like 11,000 and this is like 18,000, it's a lot. But normally we don't uh, have applications on 0 to 100 Celsius. We normally are working with 20 Celsius of water and then we heat it maximum to 60 Celsius, so we're talking about 20 to 60. You check this and this, well maybe now it's only we're talking about 13 versus 16. You might consider that as a constant. So we could say that the CP is constant. When it is not possible, when you literally are working from 0 to Celsius, uh, 100 Celsius, well, then I would never recommend you to take the CP as constant. You will need to use numerical methods, either the average or the sections. When I say section, you may say, well, I, I'm going to break this problem right here, and then this problem right here, and this problem right here, or any kind of numerical method you came up with. Or the most correct, correctly, will be use the differential method, which is essentially the differential of enthalpy equals that of the CP times the differential on temperature. And you're going to have to integrate from enthalpy 1 to enthalpy final and temperature initial and final temperature. And yeah, essentially that's what I wanted to show you guys. Don't worry about the problems, we're going to have a lot of problems later. If you really want to check out the problems, go directly to my site right here and check out the courses. You will find more, way more problems there. And yeah, essentially is everything guys. See you in the next video. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.